Hello friends, welcome to my channel Pies and Tacos. My name is Camila and today I'm going to be talking about sugar. And not just sugar, I'm going to be talking about the sugar roll in macarons. So just about every other day I'll get questions like, can I use less sugar when making macarons or can I reduce the amount of sugar when I'm making macarons? And the answer to that is a simple no. But today in this video I'm going to explain exactly why. And because I get all of those questions, I figured I would clear out some of the confusion around the sugar roll and macarons, why we add it to the meringue, why we add it to the batter, what does it do? Let's talk about it. And I'm also going to give you some options on how to make your macarons taste less sweet. So when we're making macarons, we use two types of sugar, granulated sugar or caster sugar and powder sugar or confectioner sugar. So yes, powder sugar and confectioner sugar are the same thing. Caster sugar and granulated sugar are not the same thing. Caster sugar is a little bit finer than granulated sugar, but we'll get to that soon. So the granulated sugar or the caster sugar gets added to the whites and helps form the meringue. And the powder sugar and the confectioner sugar gets added later on, once the meringue is already whipped, it gets added along with the almond flour to the meringue. And we fold it to make the macaron better. So to understand a little bit better what the sugar does and what role it has in the macarons, and why it's so important, let's talk first about meringue. So here's a quick meringue lesson. So the egg whites that we use to make macarons are basically made of water and protein. And the proteins are made of two types of amino acids, hydrophobic amino acids and hydrophilic amino acids. Hydrophobic amino acids are the amino acids that are repelled by water. And hydrophilic amino acids are those that are attracted to water. So in this picture, you can see what the structure of the egg white looks like before we start whipping it. As you can see, the proteins are all curled and it's not organized at all. It's basically just a mess. And we have the water particles around. The amino acids with the positive sign are the hydrophilic ones and the amino acids with the negative sign are the hydrophobic ones that are repelled by water. So to make the meringue, we have to beat the egg whites. We have to whip them. And when we whip the white whites, we're basically just incorporating air into the mixture. So when we add the air bubbles to the egg whites, a process called denaturation is going to start to happen, which is basically the proteins are going to unfold and they're going to get organized. So as you can see in this picture, these are the egg white proteins once we have whipped them. So when the proteins uncurl, the hydrophilic amino acids are going to attach to the water particles and the hydrophobic amino acids are going to attach to the air particles. And this network of the amino acids being attracted either to the air or to the water is what's going to form the whole structure of the meringue. So here you can see the structure of the meringue after it's been whipped. So you can see the air particles and the water particles are kept in place, separated from each other, and we have the structure of the amino acids that are forming those basically walls that are protecting them. So when we whip the egg whites, regardless of adding sugar to it or not, the proteins are going to unfold and this structure is going to form, the structure that separates the air from the water particles. However, it's going to deflate really fast and I will explain why. So when we add sugar to the meringue, we're essentially stabilizing the meringue. The sugar is going to act kind of like packing peanuts. I heard this comparison on another video that I watched, this brilliant video where somebody was explaining the science behind the meringue. It was really fascinating. I can link the video down below for you to check it out. It's an amazing video. And uh, so what she says in the video is that the, the sugar acts like packing peanuts. It's just gonna help make the, the structure that separates the water particles from the air particles super strong. I use the Swiss method when making my macarons for the most part. And when you use the Swiss method, you're basically just adding another element that's going to help stabilize the structure. And that element is heat. So we heat up the egg whites along with the sugar over a double boiler and we melt the sugar and then we start to whip it. So this little bit of heat that we're introducing to the mixture is going to help with the unfurling of the egg proteins that we talked about, the denitration process. And also it's going to make the sugar thick, like a thick syrup. And this thick syrup is just going to increase the viscosity of the structure that is helping keep those water and air particles in place. So it's going to be a very thick structure that is just going to help this meringue be very stable, which is why I love the Swiss method and which is why a lot of people find a lot of success with it because it does produce a very stable meringue. So when you do the French method that you don't heat up the sugar with egg whites first, the melting of the sugar has to happen as you're whipping it, which is why a lot of people like to use caster sugar when making the meringue with the French method 
because the, the grains of sugar are just so much finer than the granulated sugar and it just helps the sugar dissolve more easily. But I really, I don't bother with caster sugar just because I already melt the sugar with the egg whites before we start to whip the meringue. So for me, there's no need to do that. But if you're using a French method, it, it might be worth it considering using caster sugar instead of granulated sugar to whip the meringue. So we've covered the granulated sugar, how important the granulated sugar is to keep the meringue strong and to keep those structures in place. So you're gonna end up having a very strong meringue. And although you cover the granular sugar, we can move on to the powdered sugar. So what is the role of powdered sugar in the macarons? So the powdered sugar has a vital role in the structure of the macarons as well as taste. Powdered sugar is responsible for the beautiful feet that we see on our macarons. The powdered sugar helps soak up the moisture of the batter which is what makes the feet so beautiful. And also here in the United States, powdered sugar usually has corn starch added to it, and even the vegan powdered sugar has tapioca starch added to it. And that's another element that helps to dry out the batter. So I've experimented a lot lately with no rest methods and rest methods. Um, the macarons that rest usually develop a much better feet than the macarons that don't rest. Even though the macarons that don't rest get baked just fine, and the feet on the macarons that do rest and do dry out before baking are developed much more beautifully. So that's where this, this drying element comes in place in order to form the beautiful feet that we see in macarons. So the granulated sugar provides stability to the meringue by offering a strong layer of protection that keeps the air bubbles and the air particles in place and it also prevents the protein bonds from becoming too tight which will make them essentially just break up and it's going to make the meringue collapse and it also prevents the meringue from drying out. And powdered sugar offers stability to the batter by soaking up the moisture and forming the beautiful feet. Can I add less sugar to the macarons? As you can see by what I explained, sugar is fundamental to the structure of the macarons. It's not just there for the sweetness. So my recipe, my Swiss recipe, already has a lower amount of sugar compared to the other recipes out there. To most recipes, I actually did a math comparing the most popular recipes and the ratio of sugars that they have. And my recipe has a few grams less than most recipes out there. I even compared my recipe to a reduced sugar macaron recipe out there and my recipe still has 35 less grams of sugar compared to that one and really when it comes down to it the amount of sugar per shell is going to be about four to seven grams so that's not like a huge amount of sugar so if you want to make your macarons less sweet there is a way to do it and we should talk about it so how to make macarons less sweet if we cannot take sugar out of the shell recipe. Let's focus on the fillings. The first filling that I suggest you try out is a dark chocolate ganache. Very simple, dark chocolate is not really sweet at all. It's going to balance out the sweetness in the shells if you believe that the shells are too sweet. That's definitely going to help with the sweetness factor. The other option is French buttercream. French buttercream is very mild in taste. It's not overly sweet at all. It's actually not sweet enough for my taste. I do have a few recipes with French buttercream on my blog. I can link them down below for you. And the other option I wanna talk about is a tart fruit jam. So you can make a fruit jam with reduced sugar. I have tons of fruit jam recipes on my blog. You can get any of those recipes and just reduce the amount of sugar and make a tart jam with like berries or grapes or something like that and it's going to be tart, it's not gonna be overly sweet, and you can even pair that with a dark chocolate ganache. I also want you to remember that macarons are a dessert item. They are meant to be sweet, unless you're making savory macarons, in which case you also need the sugar anyway. So macarons are meant to be sweet. Just appreciate it in moderation if you are concerned about the amount of sugar in it. And the last question that I wanna talk about question that I get all the time as well. Can I make macaron shells with sugar substitutes? So what do you think my answer is gonna be? No, it does not work. Even recipes out there that claim that it works, I've never seen anybody come forth and say I've made this perfect macaron with a sugar substitute and it worked. It's not going to work because those sugars, they're usually made from alcohols. They don't work as the sugar does. They don't form that barrier, they don't dissolve in it in the water and they don't form that beautiful packing peanut structure that helps prevent the air bubbles from deflating. 
So maybe you can make them, you can make macarons with one of the sugar substitutes. It's just not going to look like a macaron. It's going to look like a cookie. And you can do that. That's totally fine. It's just not going to be a macaron. So to sum up and to conclude this video, yes, sugar is needed for macarons. You need the sugar for those chemical reactions to take place, to form the beautiful smooth tops, the beautiful feet, and the flat bottoms. So my advice is, if you want the macarons to be less sweet, focus on making a less sweet feeling. Or if you're concerned about the amount of sugar in them, just appreciate it in moderation. I have an article on my blog talking about everything that I just talked about. If you want to go ahead and read it, I'm going to link it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!